Wuthering Waves might have just made the largest announcement, period. The Chinese Genshin Impact Twitter had their blue check mark removed due to <laughs> explicit content being posted. X Blue Archive devs announced that they are making a new gotcha game and Girls Frontline 2 has taken a little bit of inspiration from Nikkei. Now, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the little bell notification. That way you remain up to date with every single thing that I post and I post daily. Do not miss out. We're gonna go ahead here and start with Genshin first. Genshin Impact won the best mobile game award at Gamescom 2024. This is an achievement, no matter how you look at it. I know a lot of people are gonna say, yeah, that technically they bought their win, yeah, there were only a few different contestants available, and that's because the Gamescom Awards typically tend to only allow participants entries when you purchase an actual showcase at the event, which means every other game, including Honkai Star Rail, was not included, and therefore, had no entry, therefore could not have won. This is upset Wuthering Waves players, this is upset Honkai Star Rail players, AFK Journey players, you name the community and they're probably upset over this. I don't think any more, however, than the Zenless community because they lost to Genshin Impact, a four-year-old game. Again, no matter how you look at this, it is an accomplishment. Congratulations, Genshin, for winning best mobile game 2024. Despite what some people might think, Genshin is still a very high quality, very fun game, and this is definitely deserved. Next, apparently, Genshin posted this ad in specific that you are watching right now on the screen on their official Chinese account. This resulted in them losing the blue check mark. The reason for this is due to sexual innuendo. Now, this is a very disturbing video. I will admit, it is highly unusual for them to uh, zoom in and focus on, <laughs> on that aspect of the, what seems to be a llama or an alpaca. But I mean, you know, we all, <laughs> I can't even make a joke about it. It's just so gross. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, my question to Genshin, was it worth it? And does, did anyone even look at that ad and, and like think to themselves, yeah, this totally sold me on playing 5.0 or not lawn. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, on the one hand, it's hilarious that they posted this. On the other hand, it's hilarious, even more hilarious, I think, that they had their account de verified, unverified. Yet there are so many more instances of significantly more explicit content across social media, across every major social platform. But this is what they target. <laughs> What? Next up, we have Girls Frontline 2 who are adding a Nikkei style mini game. This is definitely inspired by Nikkei. And you know what? I am more than happy to have this included in a game that I play. Honestly, and I might be in the minority here, but, and correct me if I'm wrong, or let me know if I'm right and you can relate to this, but I think every game that utilizes a third person style of ranged attacking magic, like firing lightning bolts, fireballs, archery, utilizing crossbows, guns, whatever. If you're at a distance and you throw something at an enemy, I think you should be able to hide behind cover like this, take, and, and, and the camera should come over from that specific, like over the shoulder perspective and show your character and the recoil that your character suffers as a direct result of firing. That is an addition to any gacha game that I would love to see. And this being included in Girls Frontline 2 is only a positive for me. This just makes me want to play it even more. Before we go any further, let me take a moment here to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon and my YouTube channel members. Well, allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this every single day. You guys are phenomenal and I can't thank you all enough for the support. Now let's keep talking. Next we have Blue Archive or in this instance, Project KV which is also known as Project Katana or Blue Katana, Blue Sword. They are various different names that this game is going by. This is an upcoming gacha game 
that just kind of like came out of nowhere. Very little is known about it. Several things have been translated from a small teaser trailer that was like 30 something seconds that was released a couple of days ago. Things like an action combat system, things like the game being set much like in Blue Archive in an academy, there being a dormitory where you can interact with your characters. And if Blue Archive is anything to go off of and the trajectory of the gotcha genre with Snowbreak, Girls Frontline 2 and everything else featuring dormitories, it is probably gonna allow for some very interesting interactions with your characters. It's unconfirmed whether we're getting this globally, it's unconfirmed when this is releasing, it's unconfirmed if there is a beta test scheduled for some time this year, it's unconfirmed what kind of graphical style it's gonna use. Is it gonna be a, a chibi game like Blue Archive? Who knows? This is not being developed by the Blue Archive developers themselves, the current ones, Nexon. This is instead being developed by X Blue Archive developers who did work on Blue Archive, but are now working on a brand new project. This sounds very, very, or potentially very cool. There are a lot of new gacha games popping up based on existing intellectual properties. So I'm very curious to see what happens with this. If you're interested, I do have a video that I will include in the description and the pink comment below where you can learn more about the game. And finally, Wuthering Waves. Once again, this could be the biggest announcement, period. Why? Because the Wuthering Waves media Twitter account just teased the Black Shores. For those of you that play Wuthering Waves, you know what the Black Shores is. This is the content update that we're looking forward to. This is the first major content update for the game. This is where we're going to be going to further the story, like a significant progression of the story, like every major patch in Genshin, when we went to Sumeru, when we went to Inazuma, we went, are going to Nalan. That is this patch, and it was just teased, not leaked, teased, official art for the area. And the most interesting part of this is that someone actually went and found exactly where this is located in game right now. It is un unreachable. But if you log into the game and you navigate to a certain region, a certain area of a certain region, on the far edges, you will see this exact location, which means they have already inserted it into the game. They likely just haven't properly fleshed it out, properly detailed it yet. Now, I am very excited for this. This is going to be a lot of fun to push through. If Mount Firmament has shown us anything, it is that they possess the ability to make some phenomenal new areas. They haven't confirmed who we're gonna be getting with the Black Shores update, whether it's gonna be Camellia, whether it's gonna be Scar, whether it's gonna be both, but I am excited to nonetheless get Shorekeeper in patch 1.3. And I'm curious who we're gonna get in 1.4, especially if Camellia and Scar aren't coming until at the very least 2.0. Hey, hey you, where do you think you're going? Sit back down. Don't you, don't you dare close out of this tab. Instead, go ahead and click one of these two videos on screen right now. Yeah, that's what I thought.